Hey guys, welcome back to the Jamie Podcast. Today we're, we're going to be talking to Josh and Daniel. Hey. And um, we're going to let them hear their perspective on uh, when it comes to their faith, and we're going to hear their testimonies as well as uh, everyone else here, which uh, uh, we're going to hear some interesting things today. And I hope uh, um, someone, maybe someone, their heart, their hearts would uh, get softened to the gospel. Does anyone want to start? Uh, I think you should probably ask a question, like some sort of opening question first. Well, uh, I think I'm started. Okay. Um, what do you guys believe in? Like, what's your what's your faith? Who wants to go first? Daniel wants to go first. Daniel, yeah, you want to go mm-hmm. first? Okay. I believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I repented from my sins and I've been born again. So now my life is about Jesus, bro. Same here. Yeah, just about the same thing. Yeah. But you real? I wanted to say, I guess the same. I, I Wait, mean, you believe in Jesus, bro? Yeah. Right. At least he read it. Really <clears throat> no. Bro, I was of no concern. No, yeah. right. But it was like, you know, I don't think I've been saved yet, but I'm trying to. I guess I don't know how that works. Oh. How oh, we compare with you, bro? Yeah. Oh, uh, thanks, I guess. I'm going to try your pen. Jason? No, don't be shy. Don't be shy, Jason. I'm trying to think. It's okay, Jason. Call me Sharma Tom and knock you out. Um, no. Nobody out, bro. <laughs> I'm knocking you out. Uh, I'm... I'm still not really sure, but uh, I'm trying to become a Christian because of some past experiences that's happened really recently. So yeah. Uh, well, I guess right now I'm an atheist. Uh, so you believe in no higher power, like no, at all? No. At least not in not in the. I mean, yeah, you know. Should we? Yeah. Uh, I've been, I'd say, truly born again for about uh, maybe a couple months now. Because there was a certain time point where I did think I was saved before, but I was I was believing a false doctrine known as free grace, and which you can, which they say you can live any kind of way that you want, just because you live, uh, just because you believe in Jesus Jesus Christ that He died for you. But if you're if you say you believe in that you love and you're not going to go ahead and do all the things you're, you're trying to like turn from sin, that's what repentance is. But free gracers they don't really believe in repentance, and I had the the wrong idea about that. So yeah, I, I, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I, and I believe He is the Most High. Yeah, bro. Free grace is crazy. Yeah, because they say you can you can say you believe in Jesus, and then go shoot at the school, and you'll still be saved. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So what's the point of even trying? What are you talking about, bro? What's the point <laughs> yeah, of yeah. Well, what about that art? You believe in free grace? Is there anything that you kind of grew up with that that made you think that way, or? Uh, it just it just happened naturally. I didn't even watch free grace YouTubers. It just. I didn't even believe it was free grace at the time. Just naturally believe that if you believed in Jesus, that your your good works were just completely out of the picture too. Yeah, and that's 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 how I ended up justifying my sin. I ended up just um, thinking it was okay to the point where I didn't even feel conviction. Yeah, he just read John three sixteen or something. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it was just the devil trying to trying yes. to accuse me. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing about free grace, you know, it gives you a, a justification for your awful behavior, which is why it's so dangerous and why it's inaccurate. Yeah. Do you, want, do you guys want to share your testimonies? Please. Yeah. I don't know. Someone else can go first. John, mine, it'll take a bit if I go through one of the model testimony. One, two, it's so yeah. long. <laughs> That's good. Jimmy, get the start the, uh, hours up, bro. To get the time up, we got yeah, that time yeah, to like, I don't know what to add to this. We just started, and bros already waiting for it to be dark. Oh, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, because make sure this is long. You know, it can't be like two minutes long. He didn't. He didn't. Yeah, you right. He didn't. It was in the first one, and he skipped all the other ones mm-hmm. up until now. Yeah. Jimmy, can no, go I said first. Yeah, how about you start, and then uh, Daniel will go next. In first two. The first. Exactly. The thing is, I still, <laughs> I still feel like Grandma's my next. testimony is still developing. Right, I know a lot more supernatural things are going to happen. For you sure, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of hard to, you know, explain right now without it, you know, sounding boring. That's the way I feel. Yeah, but you can still go through it. Okay, Mike. What you're doing before and after. Okay, so 
uh, as most people that have lived in a Christian home, they're, you could say they're quote unquote raised Christian, yeah. but, and they were forced to go to church, but that was kind of the opposite for me because of, of our transportation. We did, there was a certain time, point in time where we did go to church, but I don't, I don't really remember much of it. And it was, it still felt like a lot of lukewarmness because we went to D run at that time. You know? And it just, something just fell off. I remember it just felt like we were just going through the motions, you know? And there was a certain point in time because of my frustration with my parents being so strict that I wanted to um, just do whatever I wanted, right? I, I wanted to just, um, I wanted to start like just going into like, uh, like I hung out with a lot of um, bad influences because they were my neighbors at the time and they, and they like, they cursed and stuff and they had uh, like a, like a bad influence on me. Like I didn't end up cursing until like, maybe like a couple years after, but I know they definitely had an influence on me, especially mm -hmm. from, and that was around the time when I, when I still went to old colony. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, you wanted to rebel pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I uh, I didn't end up rebelling in the way most people did. But um, I also I wanted an Xbox, right? Mm -hmm. So when I got my Xbox in December of 2018, I I rebelled a ton, right? And I and I I got to the point where I'd stay up very late playing on my Xbox and I and I'd rage and stuff. And then at some point when I when I got home from school, I remember. Um, my Xbox was just gone, and I and I just kind of had a, a tantrum, right? Yelled and I cursed on my parents. They took away, because they took away my Xbox, and I had so much so much anger in me, and I and now I don't even understand why. Uh, my only conclusion right now is that I is, is that I had had demons, because there's no way that that, that anger would have would have come from God, right? Well, you get too addicted to it. Yeah, and um, and I did not. Sure, you sure you could say I believed in in God, but I didn't, I didn't care, you know, mm -hmm. much a much a lot like a, a lot of people yeah. that that proclaim that they're Christian, but um, I, how do I say this? At some point, uh, when I had first uh, discovered like uh, sexual sin, I had, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to say specifically what it is. But, uh, you know, I am going to say pornography, ma masturbation, <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, I think everyone was thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, once I had discovered, uh, I was going through puberty, and I, and I figured out that I could, I, I could masturbate. I went all ham, and I, and I, and I did that. <laughs> okay, you have to describe it like that? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, discover something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> new, new, new fucking, you know, pop, sorry. He moves that, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't even sugarcoat it, bro. It's not it's past that. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not even funny, man. Yeah, it's not funny, bro. But I did that for like maybe a year to a year and a half, and then there was a certain point I would just felt so empty. Like it was a one day when I when I had had sinned in the um, in the bathroom, right, and I just felt like empty, and I was just like. Like I wanted, I wanted to be saved much a lot, like like Raul and Jason, and but I didn't know how, so I just kind of uh, I repented, and I really wanted to be free from it, right? And then from that point on, I was free for about a month and a half, and from that point on, I guess I just understood that every time I asked for forgiveness, that made it okay. So I just uh, like I could not after that I could not go for more than a week to three days, three days, and then a week again, like that kind of cycle could not go more than a week without without uh, committing uh, adultery or fornication, you could say, but. Yeah, um, and do you think um, all those experiences, all those bad experiences you had, like have made you the, to the person you are today, or do you think you, you could have gone without that and still been like saved and like actually um, like born again, you could say? Like what? Like can you elaborate on what you mean? Like, all those bad experiences with sin, like, they made you realize, like, you know, that that's your living free grace and, like, not actually... Well, I didn't, like, I didn't... I, from that point on, when I when I thought that I had truly accepted Jesus, from that point on, uh, like, I was free for about maybe one to two months. 
until um, I fell again because uh, something happened in my family and it was uh, very, uh, it was a little bit disruptive to, to my mental health. I'm not gonna say what happened, but that's essentially how I fell back in sin. And I'm not, I'm not gonna give that excuse that that's, um, that that's what caused it to do it, but I'm just gonna say that, that it contributed Right? That was, that was, that's how the devil gets you, like when you're at your lowest, you know, you seem free for a while and then something happens, something unexpected, and then you're, you're more, you're more tempted to go back to, to the vomit because it just, it just feels good in the moment. But, uh, as opposed to if I never, if I never fell into that sin, uh, I'm not sure what to say about that. I'm like, uh, if I, if I had never like prayed if I had never seeked a relationship with God then I never would have gotten saved. I never would have figured out that it was that it was being lukewarm. That's what I think. It's relationship over religion. That's what being a Christian is about. Yeah. So you have a real relationship with Jesus, you don't just uh, pray to him and go to church and then you know do your all thing. And, mm -hmm. and there was a certain point later on. At this year I figured out it's being lukewarm. And I was just like, I've had enough of this. Uh, I actually want to start living for Jesus. Like it, it's, it seems a lot more uh, intriguing than, than living in sin, and it, living in sin just makes you empty. Because I felt every time, every time I did something for Jesus, I felt a lot more fulfillment than when I, when I, when I had sin, right? So, um, I don't even know how I came to that conclusion that I was being reborn. I, I don't even know how I came to that conclusion that I was in in free grace but I think a lot of that contributed from even though you guys believed in that as well you guys were trying to talk me out of it right mm -hmm. I think that definitely contributed so I guess thank you yeah. Yeah. for helping me figure that out for <laughs> it's, it's passing out wisdom I guess mm -hmm. it's passing out wisdom I guess yeah you know when we learn something we gotta we gotta be able to, to, to preach that to other people yeah but the problem is you guys weren't actually living it out at that time either no so it's kind of ironic that Problem was I didn't know nothing about nothing. I still know nothing about nothing, bro. Yeah, I was, it's good. Either I was either talking was too good. much. That's the problem, man. Yeah. yeah, it's good to stay humble, man. Yep. I'm not just sad. Respect up from for both of y'all. Yeah. yeah. But no, as I was saying, um, when I came out of the uh, lukewarmness, I started like watching a lot of, um, you know, pastors online, seeing how that they actually. Um, they actually did things that were biblical like they, they cast it out demons they prayed over people it wasn't just you know a typical 90 minute jesus four worship songs like i had seen in the church for for like a year it was it was actually something different and then then uh, i had that that need and that drive to like tell people you can still do this today and i and i wanted to like i wanted to preach that and i and i had preached that to uh some of the some of the people at lake point right and and then i went on a on a there's a certain point I, I wanted to, I actually wanted to cast out demons. And um, and I prayed that God would send me people that needed to be free, right? And uh and look what happened. What? Look what happened, man. What? Oh. I don't know, Rebel Jason kinda like oh. like what? products of, of that of that uh of that prayer. Oh yeah, no, but but I was praying something completely different oh. for both of them. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't talking about them. Just just what just wait. Have some, okay. patience. Have some patience. I had like a, I I met you guys right before that. I had prayed for for Christian friends because I just I didn't I didn't have any. All, all my friends, either just didn't care or they, they uh, were atheists like like Johnny is, and I'm just like, I didn't really feel feel like I belonged. Like obviously I've stuck in with them because I've realized I'm a light in their life, right? But. I had met uh, Josh at, at Lake Point Family Church, the, the youth that I've been going to for like a year to a year and a half now. And after a while, he decided that he was going to leave, and I was just so confused why, why, like, like, because it was to me, I thought at that time it was a good youth, and there are there are a lot of good things about it, but at the same time, I, I know now, I know now the real reason why he left, which is uh, because they're not they're not preaching. Um, I don't think that they're preaching like a, the full gospel. There's like they, they, the the goal of the church is to get you to to follow Jesus and to and to to get you to um, do the will of God, but you can't do that without repentance. And they 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 rarely or 
either rarely or they never talk about repentance, and that's that's my problem with that church right now. But I, I'm I'm not just saying those things to to trash on the church. Like I said, I definitely think there's some good things about it, right? I don't think it's like a bad church. I just feel like it's a little misguided in terms of the way that they do things. Um, but like I said, I met Josh, right? And he left, and uh, and there. Like after we started like hanging out, started going to the gym together, and I, and I um, don't take this the wrong way now, like because that was in the past. I had a bad experience with you guys, because mm -hmm. you guys, uh, you guys took working out very seriously, and it was just about that. Didn't really feel like you guys were following Jesus, right? Sure, no, no, yeah. sorry. We we're probably both like not saved at that point. Yeah, and you and you guys uh, were both trying to follow the law of Moses, right? At least you. For a little bit, I thought I met it, but I never really did it, no. Yeah. And uh, after I had like all those bad experiences, I just, I didn't want to work out with you guys anymore. So I was just like, whatever, I'm, I'm just going to stick with my friends that I have that I feel like are more positive, right? And uh, yeah. and then, and keep in mind, that's all in the past. I thought, it's not to judge you now. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, and then, so I was just I was just so confused. Why would God put me in their lives in, in my life if if they weren't actually Christians? If they if they just treated me like horribly, right? And I just like I was just like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna forgive them. So and I and I prayed for you guys that you guys would be able to see the truth, right? And actually um, decide to like actually follow Jesus. Decide to actually um, I don't remember exactly what I prayed, but it's around those lines that you guys w would stop being so judgmental, right? Sure, yeah. And then a few months later, uh, I had the. I was just. Hmm. I think you should take over from now because I ended up texting you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, asking. I started just talking to you. I don't remember exactly what we talked about, but. Oh yeah, I remember now. Uh, I I was like rejoicing, and I told you how I got delivered from free grace because that's what you guys had wanted, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you guys were living it at the time, like it doesn't make sense, kind of, right? Um, kind of, I'm kind of pausing here and there. Sorry about that. It's all right. Take your time. Excuse me a sec. Yeah, I was. I texted him rejoicing how I got delivered from free grace, and he was just like, "Oh yeah, that's awesome. I also got delivered." Right? Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Was I was on when I was in Subway? I came here. I was after. Or no, 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 no. That that was before, right? Because 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 I, I I talked to you um, also how uh, I learned about like casting out demons and stuff. I believe in the like the full power of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ can still happen today, like miracles. Sure, yeah. yeah, and healings, and and you were talking to me how you've been, uh, you, you, that you know that you have demons, right? And that you need deliverance and you were praying for someone to come along. Mm, and, yes, yeah. And then I, and I, and I told you, I'll do it for you. I'll, I'll, I'll deliver you in Jesus' name. Yeah, bro. And then, we, your house no, 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 bro. no, no, that was, that was after, like, yeah. cause, cause I, I told you that, that I was actually going on a, on a youth camp, so so I couldn't at that time, right. but but I I was still like praying about it along the way. Like I I, I knew it was gonna happen after the youth camp, but but that that didn't happen on that day. So we're just like it's gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it after the uh, uh, I go on the trip, and then after I texted you again, you know, asking if you're available, right? Uh, the day after I texted you, uh, you said you could come over in the evening, so you ended up coming over. And that whole time, that that whole time before you came over, I ended up just I was I was praying that whole time that that you you'd be delivered. And I think that's one of the times where I have actually like prayed the most because that entire time I'm like speaking in tongues, I'm worshiping, I'm praying that 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 you'll be delivered. So then when you finally came over, I was I was still very nervous, right? But but I was I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I ended up uh, leading you to repentance and renouncing everything 
and I, I ended up uh, I ended up delivering you and from from that point on you said you have not um, you have not fallen back right? yes, sir you've been you've been free ever since hallelujah yes, sir hallelujah hallelujah or to go through and and then later on um, where I heard that from from Daniel that that Josh wasn't doing this so hard that, that he was he was actually going through it and he had a lot of demons in him, um, right? right? Yeah, scripts. And uh, uh, me and Josh, me and Dan, we're talking. We're talking about how why did you two come to repentance, right? And uh, it took a little while because your demons were obviously like very. Uh, they were stubborn, yeah, man. stubborn. Like the there was a certain point you couldn't even speak like physically like the demons were binding your tongue right, and uh, when when Daniel said he prayed for you in the sun, you had you had chills, mm -hmm. right? Even though it was warm outside, you had chills. Right. And um, after uh, at some point, we ended up uh, Daniel ended up successfully bringing Josh over to to my house. We ended up going in the in the back on the field and. We we ended up leading him uh, through through repentance and through renouncing all all of the sins and everything uh, he had been struggling with, with at that point. He can share later on if he wants. I'm hoping that he will, but that that's obviously his choice. But um, uh, we ended up we ended up casting every demon out and uh, um. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you continue you know, from that point out. Continue from that point. Yeah. Well, basically. Um, yeah, from that point, I've just been been reading God's word a lot more, just appreciating life. Uh, you know, falling back in sin is like a very serious thing to me now. And every time it happens, it smacks like twice as hard. It is twice as hard to get back into, the, you know, uh, reading reading God's word and everything and pray. So I think it's important that once you are saved, you just you you stay in that state. And even though you're not going to be able to uh, resist sin all the time because we're human and we're imperfect, uh, just to not fall back as far as I did. Because it was to the point where I was getting basically possessed. I was I went through demon possession at one point. That was super horrifying. Wouldn't wish out anyone. But but yeah, um, just make sure you you stay in uh, in God's word in good faith. And that you're not following free grace, and uh, all that kind of thing. Yeah, think for you sharing. So from that point on, that I I, I truly I seen I seen God's power move around me because I've been I had been actively praying to to receive revelations and to be able to to see, um, like Him what He's doing. I want Him to real reveal Himself more to me. Um, there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. There's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to living in fury grace. At least right out and on to that. We we all we all three we believe that that um that we can uh lose our our salvation, right? Because it is uh, based off our faith but also of our works as as James says. Um so as faith without the works is dead, so is that as the spirit without the body. So it's it's not Following Jesus isn't about a, a good person; it's about obeying Him. But in that, you do become a better person because you're letting Him transform your heart, and you're letting um, Him make you a better person, and you become more like Jesus in the process. Right. Yeah. You know, if you think you can't lose your salvation, you just got to read Galatians chapter five. You know, it's very clear. Lord, it's Galatians chapter five. Said, "Well, it's um, it's Paul. It's a one of Paul's letters. It goes through all the things you can't do as a Christian. If you do or a Christian, you're not a Christian." Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know the chapter up by heart, but you know, it's got to read it. Yeah. So basically my testimony, uh, I was confused. I was lost, but I now I'd been found and I, and I found the, and found the way and found the truth and I found the light. So basically, um, I was a lost sheep, but let the shepherd chase after me. He left the 99 and he died. Amen, that bro. That's great. Well, well, we're sorry, man. See, I have let me just think for a second. Probably, how are you childhood? In the beginning, 
Maybe we got great at the heavens, all created over here. So we're back in Genesis. Hold on. Yeah. Mm. Were you forced to be a Christian as a kid? Nah, I grew up, my mom's been a Christian my whole life, but uh, I never really was as a kid. I might have been in school until like grade two. I guess I was innocent till all around then. And my first bad influence I had was my neighbor, which my neighbor says like every day. And he's like three years older than me, so you know, he knows most stuff. And, you know, and that's when I started getting introduced to all this worldly stuff. Because I went to old colony, uh, old colony school, old colony church. So I was pretty separated from everyone. And, um, you know, I've, all, I've had it since for a while. So I want to say nine and ten, ten years old. And then, um, first, first major thing that caused me to rebel was buying a phone and tell my parents permissions. Because when I go to family gatherings on my dad's side, all my cousins had a phone. Been back, they were nine years old, 12 years old. They all had a phone. They were all playing garbage offline games all day instead of going outside and playing soccer or something. So I just wanted to do that too. So I go to my friend's house, I buy a phone. And I hide it from my parents, so they don't know about it. And um, I'm connecting to my neighbor's Wi-Fi, which, uh, you know, just having unrestricted access to the internet kind of co-ops a person. So the fun I discovered what porn was when I was like 12, and I was addicted to that for like three, three and a half years, or every day, bro. I'm, I'm jerking off, bro. Se several times a day, bro, we're shooting blanks. Like, it's bad. It was terrible. But, oh, uh, yeah, you know, that kind of depleted all my energy. Um, having low energy caused me to just sit at home, eat junk food all day. So I got really fat. And, uh, you know, it was a point where I was like 210 pounds. And, um, and I started, uh, my, my same cousin that I wanted me to get a fall on. He uh, came over one day when I was like 14, and then he had a vape with him. So I'm trying to be a cool guy. I gotta lie to, to seem cool every time. And he's like, hey bro, you ever vape before? I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, vape all the time. I've never hit a vape before. I don't know how to do it. Of course I vape, bro, what are you talking about? Yeah, man. Uh, so then I get the vape. Obviously, I didn't know what I was doing. But, um, you know, so from that point on, I'm like, okay, this is cool. I'm gonna bottle them. Two weeks later, I bought them on vape. And uh, so then I got addicted to vaping, and they could cheese, and I was like 14. I only did that for about seven months or so. And I quit, and then uh, I was saying, oh, this one of my other friends, and he got into someone else's house, that extra trap, that was kind of, it's kind of deal. And they had like a couple of bombs there, and that's my first time I sold me. Took a bomb rip, and oh, that was, that was crazy. I, I was black and out. The room was getting black and rolling back in. I could barely stay awake. But the next day, I was like, man, that was awesome. So then, like, very shortly after, I didn't, I didn't pay very long after that. Quit vape as soon as I discovered what weed was, pretty much, because it was, like, way better. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, I was, like, calling, oh, they do this gay. Go get a joy, bro. It we both did. But, you know, so then two weeks after I smoked me for the first time, I buy a couple of bags of edibles for me and my cousins so they come in my lips. My parents were out of different uh someone else's house, so we had the whole house for ourselves till at eight PM. But we underestimated those edibles. We didn't know they were gonna last as long as they did it. So we took the edibles around lunchtime. And it takes super long for Elvis to kick in. So it only kicked in around 3 p.m. We had five hours left when my parents hit home. Well, did we know we were going to be high for like on the 25 hours? So it was bad. I was high until the next day, 4 p.m., like the whole day of school. I had to re school early because I was sick. My dad knew I was high, and that's when I got in trouble, and he found that that kind of fallen, and he took that away, and you know beat my ass pretty bad and you know yeah. a good father is supposed to 
But that hurt my dad really bad. And he, he feels like he fit, failed as a father then. And, um, you know, ever since then, I just got way worse. Like, I just stopped caring. I would smoke weed around him. I would, uh, you know, do anything I could. I would, like, sell weed. I would, you know, instead of working with my dad, like, he has a couple businesses I couldn't have, could have, you know, worked with him and everything would have been fine. I went and go get my own job at a Burger King. And then people there could sell me, like, dab pens really cheap, so I would sell those. So then I'm smoking weed and selling weed at the same time. And uh, then I started hanging out with, like, who was that? Who was the that? He didn't care about me at all. And all of my old friends from my childhood, like, like none of them hung out with me anymore because they all thought I was a crackhead now. Like I'm, like, I'm smoking meth or something. But it was just like I was smoking weed all the time. And, uh, yeah. It's got to a point I was taking a couple other drugs. I would do you know, mushrooms, acid, stuff like that. And you know, I had a couple of wild experiences like that. And I peer pressured a lot of my friends to take, to smoke me, to, you know, take acid. And a lot of them are still in a bad place today. It ruins you completely. So, yeah, after, Smoking weed, I probably did from when I was 15. No, it was before that. I was 14. Smoked for like a year or a year and a half. Earlier this year, what was it? Maybe February or March was the last time I smoked weed. So then um, my cousin that had given me the vape in the first place, the one that, you know, given, given me the. Uh, the one I used to smoke weed with all the time, but he's the first guy that gave me mushrooms, everything. And uh, he became a Christian. He got baptized, and I seen the way he, his life completely changed. You know, he was a completely new person. So I'm like, okay, I, I gotta do something about that. I gotta, I gotta see what's going on with him. So, you know, we couldn't have a conversation before that sober. You know, we would have to be on some, be chill. And, now we got a really deep conversation, sober, you know, and um, you know he kind of he kind of convinced me like you're living your life wrong. You gotta you gotta you gotta change as a person if you, you expect anything to get better. And um, so I, I seen him become a Christian, and I seen this YouTuber. His name is Young Don Reborn. He would make animations about him and his friends uh, smoking weed and doing all sorts of other crazy stuff. He also became a Christian, deleted all his old animations, and now he's actually animating the Bible. He does live streams where he's reading the Bible all day long. And I uh, highly recommend whoever's listening to check him out. Um, but yeah, I've seen him become a Christian, and uh, he, uh, he kind of convinced me, you know, to become a Christian too. So I had to, uh, I had to confess all my sins. To my parents, to all friend, to my friends that are wronged in the past, I had to forgive other people that have like you know robbed me and like done me wrong, anything like that. And yeah, after that, um, you know, I started getting really crazy dreams. I would get attacked in my dreams. I would get like sleep paralysis. Um, you know, I'd be seeing demons in my dreams, and. Uh, so I started calling out to Jesus, and every time I used Jesus' name in my dreams, everything would just, I would wake up or everything would be peaceful. And, um, and that's what I did. I went to church, and then with my mom, we went to a new church, set up a little calling, you know. And um, I seen my cousin and my other friend, they got baptized there, heard their testimonies, and it really convicted me to, you know, to go actually become a Christian. So that what I did was I repented from all my sins at first, but then I fell back, because young Don, the guy I was listening to all day, he also believed in the free grace, he was preaching that. So what I started doing was, I would listen to his Bible studies while I was high. I, I started smoking weed with him. That's like the dumb thing you can do, right? But I what I did for a while. And then, you know, he, he uh, came to a new understanding and it was, he was preaching you've got to repent and you can't live in you can't live in a life of sin or else you're going to go to hell that's just how it is so now um, I want to say the exact date but you know 
I don't, I don't know the exact date, but yet, yeah, over time, like, and Jesus is kind of sanctifying me, right? Like, the more I pray, the more I read, the more I learn, right? So, you know, over time, he kind of, he cleaned my life up, and I, like, I would meet a guy that, you know, I've wronged in the past, or I've stolen from in the past, and then I just, I get convicted, I've got some problem, I've got to tell him, hey, bro, you know, I did this to you back then, Rich, I'm sorry, you know, so I have, there was a couple of months where I was just talking to everybody I knew, I had to, like, tell them, like, I had to make everything right, and I had to even go to our old school, my old teachers we used to do, like, events at my teacher's house, um, one time, everyone had brought money there to go make cheesecake for Mother's Day, and I stole, like, half of them, like, bro, like, I went upstairs and I stole my teacher's money. And I had to go back and I had to, you know, bring, bring her the money and uh, explain to her like that I did that. And I only stole it to, to buy weed too, right? But, um, yeah. But she's a Christian too. She obviously forgave me right away. And I know that. She said, you gotta get baptized. I'm like, I know. So now, my plan is to get baptized next year when my church is doing baptism again. So it's gonna be next year in March when I get baptized. Okay. And yeah. I'm ready to get baptized now, but like uh, I want to do it in my church. So, yeah. So Jesus come kind of save me, right? And I'm it good for you. That's a great test of all. Yeah, I was like, I was like intrigued the entire time. It was mm. it, like really surprised me, but that you, you know, there were kind of things that you did. Was, yeah, I left a lot of details out too, but no, but that's good. Yeah. yeah. Tip what a drop. You're good. Okay. No, I've done way too much stuff. I'm not proud of it. So, but like, the fact yeah. that you came at it back, exactly. you were that deep in a pit, yeah, like, exactly. all the way out, and then you're still climbing. Nah, no, bro, Jesus can save anybody. Anybody, yo. Yeah, it goes to show how real it is. Like, you hear so many testimonies of these people. Who are yeah. Awful things. Yeah, you hear testimonies of people that used to be murderers and, like, rapists, bro. And they. They're spreading the word of God now, like, they're spreading the gospel. That's what I want to do now, I'm practicing, I want to evangelize just in the streets, just random people. I want to just pray with random people. I want to spread the gospel everywhere. Yeah, because um, I feel like I'm the only uh, atheist in the room. I mean, I don't know, because like I've fallen, i have gone back and forth, like I was originally a Christian. Uh, all right, you know, it, yeah, yeah, like Luke Orbis, yeah, 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 bro, you can just trust God's timing, because my cousin, that his testimony convicted me, he was 31, and then he got saved, you're what, 17? Uh, so yeah, 17, 16, 16, okay, yeah, so you're young, right, and he, he was going way crazier stuff than me, he had four DUIs, he wasn't, he wasn't going to be able to drive. He wasn't going to have, to have his license for 10 years. And uh, after he gave his life to Jesus, and, um, you know, like, uh, completely switched around and repented from what was saying that he was not having sex. He wasn't, like, drinking, getting drunk, driving anymore. So he had, his, he had a 10 year suspension on his license. Yeah. And um, Jesus told him in a dream, come to me and I'll make it go away. So two weeks after he he gave his life to Jesus, he had a court. And the judge ruled him seven years he would take off of that sentence. Wow. So he had a three three year sentence left and there was a program he could do to take two and a half years off. Wow. So now so he went through that program for two months. Oh no, three months he went through the program and I took another two and a half years off. Um <laughs> So I, I kind of grew up Christian. My parents were Christian. Uh, they tried to raise me to be Christian. Uh, thing is, I never really took it seriously. Uh, they'd never take me to church on the daily. It was just kind of a uh, b believe the word of God and you'll be all right type thing. Thing is, my parents were always lukewarm. So they kind of passed on that lukewarmness on to me when I was young. Um, so I, I would go around to, to youth in, in church sometimes, but uh, I, I believed I was saved, but I really wasn't. Um, I, would, I would go around, I would, I would pretend to be a believer of God. Uh, 
all this to say, like, I've met a ton of bad influences in my life that, uh, you know, kind of dragged me away from that. And, um, man, it's hard to figure out where exactly to start, but. Ten years old, what was up? Ten years old, what was I doing? Yeah. Oh, I was just playing Smash Bros. with my brother, so it's like, yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, no. Twelve years old, what's going on? Twelve years old, what's going on? Um. I'm gonna just start early high school. That's kind of where it started. Um, early high school, I was a I was a bit of a player. I liked talking to girls. I liked um, going on uh, on dates with with these girls just to kind of experiment, just to kind of see what's up, just to uh, teach myself uh, how they worked and how to talk to them and whatnot. Um, I had this this one girl. Uh, I was uh, dating at the time. I remember I got into vaping when I was uh, 12 years old. Um, my parents, they wanted to quit smoking at the same time together, so to combat that, they bought, uh, they each bought a vape. Um, they made the wise decision of leaving it on their bedroom floor for a curious kid to pick up. So that's exactly what I did. Um, from there, I've been addicted to nicotine pretty much up until now. Uh, so I, I ended up st stealing my brother's vape when I was pretty young and then I brought it uh, to this date with this girl we had both gone to a park and I was just I was whipping it out and I was I was thinking I was so cool and I was hitting it all the time it was super dumb looking back but uh, from there uh, my parents eventually found out I was vaping so they ended up taking it away uh, obviously um, I was grounded for a bit. Uh, thing is, if anyone knows anything here about nicotine addiction, it's that it's probably one of the hardest things to to get rid of. So what I did was uh, I'd go and uh, take my dad's cigarettes instead because I uh, didn't have the vape on me. I was young. I couldn't afford nothing. So I started taking my dad's cigarettes and then from there, uh, I got into marijuana. I had smoked one time with a few friends in a, in a church parking lot, ironically. Uh, this was when I was 14. And uh, I went through a big music phase too. I was getting into to lots of worldly music, listening to Future, Lil Baby, uh, all the popular rap artists out now. Um, I'll just listen to them all the time, just rot my brain, just constantly uh, research their music and and study their lyrics, their very satanic lyrics. And that's what I was into, that was my thing, was, was music. And uh, what marijuana did for me was it made it sound so much better. What I noticed was whenever I smoked weed, the music, it just it felt like you were in that atmosphere. So I continued to do that. Uh, first ever weed pen I bought though was was soon after I smoked in that parking lot for the first time uh, I was This was when I was 15 um, I think it was October This was at the time that Daniel was working at Burger King and he was selling He hit me up uh, one time in the or I don't I don't remember exactly how it went but I think I was I was looking for for weed, and he happened to be there. I think he had added me after someone posted me to their story or something. It doesn't really matter. But then I hit up my best friend at the time, uh, and I asked if he wanted to help me buy this pen. So I go to his house, and basically the plan was to uh, to buy this pen on Saturday. Um, tell my brother we got bored, so we can go go to my house for Sunday, because. This friend's house was way too small to do something like that, and we would have easily gotten caught. My house is fairly large. So, I was like, okay, uh, we're going to tell my brother that we got bored here. We're going to go home with him. We're going to smoke up Sunday. That's exactly what we did. Uh, we smoked like crazy. We started playing Fortnite. Um, man, that was the best high of my life right there. It was was the very first time where everything seemed like it seemed like I was blacking out but at the same time it felt so good we had music running and everything we had snacks we had the whole whole stick and it was just 
I thought that was the prime of my life right there. Uh, as I went on though, I kept wanting to to buy more. I was I was truly addicted to it. Like, um, it was the only thing that that made me happy at the time because I didn't really have a lot of friends growing up. Didn't really. Uh, I was very socially awkward, dealt with uh, social anxiety a lot, uh, depression, struggled with that since I was like 11 years old maybe, um, suicidal thoughts, those kinds of things, and what that, the, the marijuana did for me was, it helped me to, to have fun, get that quick dopamine kick, and then if I ever get sad or depressed again, I can just do it again. And uh, that's what I liked about it. So I kept buying and buying and buying. Eventually, um, I I wanted to buy a pen one time. But, yeah, I wanted to buy a pen. That same friend that I was always smoking with, we decided to go to the movie theater to buy this pen. Uh, Daniel had hit me up. He was like, hey, uh... I'm at this uh, this dude's house right now, but I can get access to a pen. I can bring it to you at the movie theater. We can just watch the movie together. We can chill there. We we're like, all right. So we hit this movie theater. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Eventually, I get a call from Daniel. He's like, come to the bathroom. I run to the bathroom. He's got no shoes on. He's he doesn't have any shoes on. He's like, he's just tweaking super hard he's i've never seen him so scared like even now never seen him more horrified in his life he's telling me about this trap house and all these all these guys and i don't know the details but uh they were beating the guy with a cinder block doing all this uh horrible stuff and he said i didn't get the pen for you because of that and i was a little bummed out but at the same time i understood because well yeah he, he just left a, a horrible environment from there, uh, me and Daniel started hanging out more. Uh, I don't know what drew me to him. I guess it was just any sort of loyalty I could feed off of. That's those were my that was my friend group. Um, but I also I saw something endearing in his personality. Uh, he wasn't like your stereotypical drug dealer. He actually he cared for people. He was smart. So I decided to stay around him. And, uh, yeah, we started hanging out more. He, he ended up putting me onto acid, uh, one time. Me, my friend, and Daniel were, were all at my house, and, and we, we took these tabs, me and Daniel. Uh, the other one didn't. And then, uh, when you, when you're on acid, right, you feel, you feel the whole vibe of the room. I could tell something was wrong. There was definitely demons in that room. I could tell Lucas... Uh, my friend, he didn't know what to do. Uh, he wanted to go home. I could, I could just feel it. I could feel his aura. Eventually, he ended up going home, and then me and him, me and Daniel, just lied to, lied to my parents that we were just gonna walk to the woods, and, and that was that. And then, yeah, we went for a walk to the woods. We we talked about um, Daniel brought up Christianity, which was weird to me because he's never really done that before. Um, we we're still high out of our minds, so obviously not sober thinking, but he was telling me about, uh, Young Don, he was telling me about these live streams, he's telling me there's more, more to acid than just looking around at the world, right? He says, uh, once we get back to your house, we'll watch this guy, we'll, and, uh, you'll feel some conviction or some sort of thing like that. We go back to my house, we're watching this guy. Everything was more mind-blowing when I was high off my mind. So it got me really thinking about becoming a serious Christian. At this time, me and Daniel were still doing drugs. But uh, yeah, eventually we took acid again. This time we lied to my mom and we went to the movie theater. Uh, we took the tabs in there. Uh, we watched Avatar. It was a complete out-of-body experience for me. Uh, the second trip was my, my best one, quote-unquote. And, uh, yeah, the whole world, it just seemed so beautiful. Uh, everything seemed amplified by like a hundred times. Just walking through town, it felt like a video game. 
uh, every every everywhere I looked to look like a movie poster. It was insane. Does it make uh, you more interested in the idea of becoming a Christian? I feel like um, there are many components to this, okay? Um, what kind of household did you grow up in? Household? Okay. Um, you know, like average Mennonite household, you know how it'd be. Um, you yeah. What's your last name? Reimer. 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 Okay, um... Oh, dude, there's gonna be a lot of empty silence to have to edit up. <laughs> um, bro, I don't know why I have that ADHD, bro. Okay, well, uh, your your parents, what what do they believe in? Uh, you know, they're Christian and stuff, but it's like, and they don't really. I don't feel like they really have the the love of Jesus, you know, that kind of thing. It's just like, follow the rules. And like, one of the biggest rules is just like, listen to your parents, things like that. Cause they're very traditional in, in a way. Cause my dad's like, you know, the boss of the household, you know, and he tells me that multiple times. And it's just like, it didn't make sense to me. Cause it's like, shouldn't you both, the father and the mother, be working together. Um, it didn't feel like that. I guess that that's just like a component of it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes through. Did they through. try to force you into becoming a Christian? Well, yeah, like they, they always thought I was. And okay, I was a Christian at a point, you know, like a kind of like a lukewarm Christian, just being like, oh yeah, I'm Christian. Just going through the motions. Yeah, going through the motions. Um, I don't really know what got me out of it because oh dude it was actually pretty early the more I think about it like how early on I just became atheist um I guess I, I was really interested in like um like science and stuff like like, the, like you know like like animals and stuff and that kind of led me to like watching stuff about evolution and uh the, the origin of the universe Things like that, and you know, I just got me re like really intrigued about like the facts and stuff, and and, and I found out like it, it just guess it just doesn't line up with um, religion, so I'm like oh I can't I can't have both I can't have my cake and eat it too you know, mm -hmm. so I have to have one or the other so I'm like you know well I'm gonna do what, what aligns with what aligns with my beliefs you know, but. So I guess that's what it was. Like I had moments where I like felt that presence of God. I, I felt that when I was younger, I went to a church, a service, and like it really, I don't know what they were talking about. Oh yeah, my sister had her testimony. Yeah, and it really like, it, it made me tear up. Um. Damn, okay. And I remember texting Jimmy, or, or DMs or something. Um, like, how we really, like... It was a long time, but I, I wouldn't expect you to remember that, but... No, I remember. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, it was when we were, like, 13. Yeah. 2020. I think that that was kind of the last moment that I really felt that way. And then I just slowly just drifted. Because I remember, um, as a Christian, I had these set of beliefs. They're like, okay, 
uh, being homosexual, nope, bad. And then like I had to, have, when I became, when I was becoming an atheist, I had to get that out of my mind. Cause, cause you know, just like accept them and stuff. I don't want to get into all that right now. I just don't, I'm tired of that, yeah, but. Sounds like it was very religious, right? Hmm? Like your family, they were very religious, right? They don't have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, like it's religion over relationship. Yeah, yeah, relationship over religion is what you need. Yeah. Because in order for a family to to work like good in the like, as a as a Christian family, yeah. Christ has to be the center. Like the mom and dad have to both have a relationship with Jesus. Um, I went to. Uh, one of my friend Zach's brother-in-law's uh, Bible study the other day, and he was explaining it how it's a triangle. Mom yeah. and dad are here. Jesus is at the top. Yeah. The closer they get to Jesus, the closer they get to each other. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, it's a cute. It's yeah. a good analogy. I think. Yeah. And um, whenever you see like parents fighting with each other, yeah, and they're not focused on Jesus. Oh yeah, there's a lot it of. It kind of ruins the kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I feel like a big part of why I'm an atheist is because of the fighting. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I think about, was I destined to become this way? Or can I change my fate? It's like, it's, it's like every moment you have, every minute, every second, you can decide your future and what you want to live for, you know? And it just, it just really makes me think, you know? Yeah, I feel like the house, the household, the parents, you know, that they don't really have a stable relationship, I don't think. And, cause like, I've never heard them say, like, I've never heard them say, like, I love you to each other, like, ever. And there are other moments that I don't want to get into that have made it worse for me. I've only heard my parents say that to each other after I became a Christian. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Before that, nope. Yeah, it's, it's like I also feel uh, I'm like out of touch with my like masculinity like with, with who I am as a man because I feel like um, I f feel like I'm a, a bitch. <laughs> don't pull yourself down. Man. Yeah, 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 but like, oh yeah. Be, you can build yourself up, bro. Here's another whole layer to that, yeah. yeah. Like depression is very big in my life. It's I've been in a, I feel like I've been in a, all right, Jason, just, just let it out. Just laugh. You just said it like that. Yeah. I feel like, I feel a, like I'm a bitch. bitch. Like I'm a batch. Bro. Um, don't, like, don't get you're, you're not a bitch. the idea. Yeah. You gotta be, like, mad that you feel that way. Yeah. Bro, change it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I've gotten so comfortable with that idea. Yeah, I know. For years. You cannot be comfortable with that idea. Like, oh. for, for like four or five years, I felt that way. Yeah. And like, I never got out of that. Um. Okay, let's let's wait till this time. Uh, sh this the only more is gonna come. Like like uh, okay. animals. It's like a okay. Somebody cop. Uh yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. I, man, why is it so hard for me to concentrate, man? Come on, man. It's alright. I don't even know where okay. to go from there. From from all the testimony so far, has that made you think more? Has it changed your mind a bit? And also, you can... Like, because there's this part of me where it's like... I can just go along with the guys and not question it. But I feel like all these questions oh, yeah. keep coming up. And it's like, it prevents me from doing it because like, I know I can't morally be okay with this because like saying that like you're saved and everything that's great it's like you're but I feel like you're romanticizing it the fact that a lot of bad stuff has happened like in the Bible it's just a lot of killing and just I mean the issue with that is when you focus on the bad thing, there's no good yeah but it's like it's contradictory to itself. How is it contradictory? Uh, There's bad things in the world because of humans. Yeah, yeah. See, you know... Ever since Eve ate that apple, like, the world has gone downhill. 
but God sent His Son to to be our Savior and save us from all this this mess that essentially we created. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know where to begin with that, but. I mean, I hope I hope you find God, and I hope you have an experience that could help you move towards Him. I mean, it's just a matter of time. It's 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 like. Even the Bible too, like living for Jesus, it'll help you with your masculinity. Like there's nothing like the Bible that will teach you how to be a man. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh man, right right now I feel like. Oh. Oh. oh boy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay, I mean, Johnny, you, you struggle with motivation. Oh, yeah. But when you surround the idea of motivation, you hug on too tight with it. So when you don't have it, you don't do anything. Yeah, because I, I feel like sometimes you, you just, well, because like, I've had experience like this recently where you're like at the gym. And I, just, I just don't know why I'm even there. Because sometimes you don't really need a reason to do something. It's like I'm, it's like I'm existing to exist. Like, I just don't have a reason. I mean, that's, that's the idea of atheism. You, you just exist to exist. There's no that's not the idea. That's just actually what the belief is. Cause well, that's not, that's not what that's it is. That's what I feel. Uh, it's not his time to figure things out. Like, you know, it's to, to like, no, get a bro, girlfriend. You know? That's what I'm talking about. You gotta figure things out as soon yeah. as possible, bro. Life only gets harder from here. Oh, yeah. Not to sound like a downer, but... Oh, yeah, and that gets me down. Yeah, yeah, that gets you should be down. striving to learn more every day. Like, learn about yourself, learn about other people. And that's why you need a good yeah. circle yeah. around yourself. Bro, yeah. hit me up. We'll go to the gym. I, Push you past I don't have a gym membership. And you'll be sore for four days. And you'll be like, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks, man. Because only through pain you will find uh, okay, something. You only grow when you're not comfortable. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to seek... You just, you get weaker. Discomfort, yeah, because it's like, and you're less of a man, you yeah. know, it's just like, like you become like feminized in a way. Yeah. Where it's like, if you keep sticking to like, because you know how back in the day, you know, you know, the Vikings, you know, they were, they were absolute chads, right? Yeah. They'd, they'd be conquering, they'd be, they'd be going crazy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they'd be conquering. But like it's it, it's it like, like slaughter their own brother for stealing their corn, bro. Yeah, that, that's kind of yeah. a little too far there. But yeah. like I'm I'm just saying like and they might throw so much pain, but they like oh dude, you know like it, it just have like a sliver of what they do. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's like you know. I've, I've, I recently watched a video where it's like a motivation for getting in shape and like, you know, getting, getting more responsibilities and stuff. It's like, like, it feels like shameful to say like, oh, motivation, it would be f to gain attention from women. It would be like, oh, I, I don't do it for that. Do it for yourself or, you know, that. But it's like, it is, I feel like it is a good motivation because like to find a woman who actually like isn't like, you know, like judgmental, like, oh, I want this, I want that. Be like very picky and Talk like to Josh. He's a high standards. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's a player. No, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. past that now. Like, I'm just waiting for God to give me a woman at this point. Yeah, wait for your wife, bro. Yeah, wait only, for but you gotta be a man to have a real wife. Yeah. If your wife's not gonna respect you, if you're not a man. Yeah, and you, and you gotta lead her. You gotta be able to pick her up like and throw her across the room. If, if you, you lead her, strength, she will follow. Her, you know? But you don't want to actually do that because she, she'll lead you. Yeah. <laughs> don't actually throw your boy. Because, like, if you can't, uh, if you, if, if you're, uh. Take your time. If you lead her, she will follow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. That's all? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's good, you know? I feel like this whole thing, all talking, you meeting like um, Josh and Daniel, y'all have been... Yeah, that's Josh.
I feel like I've already grown with you just by hearing your testimony. I appreciate that. Because yeah, like just hearing how genuine. It's, as if I just... it's like wh when I first saw you. It's like you know, I was I was intimidated because like how how oh, like bro, the cut did it. Like, the cut made you intimidated. Yeah, you were like because yeah. like in the in the buzz cut, like oh no no no. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. Before before he goes, take off your glasses real quick. Show John what you look like. Give him a straight face. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can't. What? <laughs> bro, I'm laughing because of Johnny now. I'm laughing at him. I, I, I. No, it's nothing. Because, you because look more it looked like before you told me, like, because it's like, mm. before it's like, you, you seem like very tough. But now that I've heard you, like, like I can feel more comfortable just being around you. And, like, it's like I can, jo I feel like I can already joke around you. I'm not a bad guy, bro. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what is he talking about? Bro? I have. Yeah, man. Right, you man. seem like a genuine people's. I think that's pretty cool. That's good, okay. okay. Jason's turn. Go. Yeah, thanks, for your, I mean, right here. thanks for your perspective. No, you're going over. No, I'm going right here. Okay, I can sit yeah, back down. So I grew up in a Buddhist household. My parents got a divorce when I was really young. Whatever. Yeah. I grew up in a Buddhist home because I live with my mother. I mean, there's literally like a shrine upstairs uh, for Buddha. And on my dad's side, he's agnostic, I think. My grandma's like a Catholic. Point is, though, I've grown up in a family with uh, like a mix of religions. So that caused me to not have any religion to be raised with. So that led me to being confused. But both of my parents believed that I should make my own experiences to find out who and what I believe in. And well, that, that led me to... The moments I recently happened. Um, so I decided to become a Buddhist a few weeks ago. And I became a Buddhist. So if not 20 minutes later, uh, I was going to Johnny's house. And then a car with the words on the back, Jesus is King, pulled up right in front of our car. And just like in bold text, and I looked right at the text. So, uh, you know, that's cool. But I just ignored it. But, oh, and... When I hung out with Johnny, Jimmy, and Raul, uh, Jimmy showed me a picture, and he said, this is an accurate picture of Jesus Christ, because Jesus, he is not a white man. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh. He, I didn't know what he actually, because like, I've seen that so many times. Like, you think Jesus would be pasty white? Because, you know, <laughs> that's like the... So realistic. But point, point is, though, uh... Instead of Jesus being like a white man with like flowing long hair, it's just it seems like an average Arab guy, uh, dark brown, dark brown skin, you know, black hair and a short beard. So yeah, Jimmy showed the, showed me that picture, saying that this is an accurate picture of Jesus. So then the next night, I go to sleep, and this is when I had this dream that completely changed my perspective on everything. Um, so in the dream, I woke up outside on some gravel in a really dark place, and the uh, wind started to pick up a lot, like more, almost like a little tornado was forming. And in the background, there's a lightning storm, like starting to happen. Continue. And so probably maybe a month, month and a half before this, it was a horrible storm. And me and Jimmy just happened to be on a call at that specific time. And me and him were talking about how lightning is a representation of, like, God's wrath. And Jimmy, he started praying for me in tongue. And he was praying that God was in a lightning strike at that specific moment to prove to me of his existence. But, of course, that didn't happen because that would uh, be direct proof in the moment that he's real. But... This dream that happens over a month later. Oh my god. Like literally, oh my god. What? Hold up. Just wait, please. My, my mom. Hold up, mother. I love you so much. I love you so much, mom. Here you go. Come back. You need to hear this, man. There you go. Okay. But. You missed like half, half his testimony, bro. Wait, what? Okay, but anyways, bad, uh, Jimmy prayed for God to send a lightning strike at that moment. 
during that thunderstorm, but he didn't. So yeah, but a month later in the dream, in that dream, the this little tornado starts to pick up faster and faster. And in the background, that lightning, just like a lightning show, which uh, me and Jimmy had seen at the same moment. And when Jimmy prayed for me, uh, it was like the same thing was happening in the background. And as the wind picked up, it was, it was literally like a tornado was happening. And then in the middle, of, I must have closed my eyes or looked away or simply blinked. And a man, he appeared in the middle of that like tornado. And I couldn't make out any distinct facial, like literal his face and his facial features. But I, I know for a fact that he had short black hair and a short beard, just like literally just like the picture that Jimmy showed me the day previous to this. And then his eyes started to glow like a, just a shining white. And when I looked at it, like I was, uh, I was like blinded seriously. But of course my natural instinct was fear seeing a man in the middle of all of that with glowing white eyes, but he started to move like really slowly towards me. And you know, I, it's like I didn't have control over my emotions. I just felt a little bit safer with every like, what's the, what's the word? With every like small movement. But the first step he took, I snapped right out of the dream. And I remember this dream, which happened two, three weeks ago, like by distinct detail, just like I said it. So I've been remembering that. And I do think that was Jesus Christ trying to come to me in that dream. But mainly, probably, you know, this, yeah. how would I say yesterday's yes, yesterday? Is yesterday. The day before yesterday. The day before yesterday, yeah. Um, so it was really late at night, and I was on the very verge of falling asleep. Like, I was literally just about to go to bed. But my mind started rambling, and I'm not the type of person to quite literally lose control of my thoughts, but that's exactly what happened. I couldn't control my own mind, and a lot of noises started to kind of bang, just constantly replay in my head. And at that moment, I was thinking of God, and I don't, I honestly don't even know why. But I was just thinking of Him, and, and I started just saying in my mind, like, I want to be saved, I want to live a better life, I want to follow you. And so and so on then just like these noises it got louder and louder and louder and i was still on the verge of falling asleep and then i mean when i say this like i truth truthfully i don't care at all if any of you believe me but in a voice i've never heard before of a young man i just heard thank you jason like in the middle of all that that noise and that tension in my head like my my brain was completely not working it was going haywire i just heard a calm thank you jason in the middle of it and then it all stopped and, um, of course, like I jolted up and my heart rate was increasing and my breathing was starting to pick up and, uh, I was shocked and I believe that's Jesus Christ. So I, I firmly b now believe in the existence of God. It's just, I'm now entering that process where I have to truly give my life to him to, you know, become better. So yeah, that, that's what happened to me really recently. And that's where I stand. So I'm definitely not a Buddhist and I want to live for Christ. I just have to start the process of doing that. So yeah. I had a realization. Right, I, was, I was wondering what that... I was wondering what that, that whole like... That one step could have meant. But I, I just had a, a realization. If you draw close, if you draw near the Father, the Father will draw near to you. And you must have done something for that, for that dream to happen. Like, you started thinking about him more, like, like, started actually, you want, you wanted to follow him, right? And then you got that dream. He took one step towards you. Now you just have to keep taking steps towards him. That's what I think. I mean, now that you say that, I, that completely makes sense to me. Yeah, actually. And that's what I'm trying to do. I want to start a relationship with them. I've never read the Bible, but now you gave me a Bible earlier today, and I want to start reading it because I want to live for Him. You know, I mean, I I saw Him in my dream, but that that's my story. And like I said, I've 
And I used to be agnostic before I became Buddhist, like all my life. But I now firmly believe that Jesus is king. Because like I said, I saw him and I truly do also believe that I heard him. Uh, only the, you know. The death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross. No, that's not what I was going to say at all. What were you going to say? But, and, but I also do believe that I like actually heard him when I was on the verge of falling asleep that night. Just two, yeah, two days ago, I think. Yeah, day. And when you hear his voice, you can feel the peace and love in his voice, right? I mean, well, yeah, it was just calmness. Like just, when I heard that voice, my brain just those noises they all stopped. Was all right, because his voice is perfect, right? Like those noises stopped. My mind was mm -hmm. calm, mm -hmm. and I fell asleep. Not five minutes later. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I kind of, I didn't like like fully doubt your experience but like the fact the, I, I was just confused why he would say thank you but then I realized you you were saying you were going to choose him over any other any other religion like that's just like uh, an act of like gratefulness from guys like you would choose me that's that's the way I feel like actual humbleness right there like you choose me over all these other false religions you choose me like he's probably like like tearing up right now like, I mean like I said I you wanna, you wanna follow me. like I said I, I don't care if no one believes me but I know what I heard and I know how the that voice I heard made me feel yeah well the Bible says one sinner comes to repentance all the angels rejoice mm -hmm. like, you know I do not know what great, that means it's a great thing when someone someone comes to Jesus for Amen. And yeah now that you know he's real, the next step is uh, starting to build a relationship with him. Start to mm -hmm. pray more every day. Yeah. Uh, read his word. You know, study it for like take time to study it, and it'll, it'll like his word becomes alive if you spend enough time. In. I mean, yeah, everything I'm... just makes sense, bro. Yeah. And like, like uh, me of all people, I never would have thought I would become a Christian. I don't think anyone would have thought that. Because I was just so stubborn. I always just uh, denied everything Jimmy said. Yeah. Just calling it stupid or just something like that. Mm -hmm. But oh, we all been there, bro. It's just yeah, and yeah, like, like the fact that you of all people came to Christ, it's like that's like honestly. Like... And um, just like Raul, Mash Springs a real damn issue. Uh, yeah, yeah, but more than you. Because I, I definitely did a lot more. What? Um, oh. Like, like, cause uh, last night, cause I mean it when I say I was, I'm, I was, and I still am addicted. But last night I, I got that urge again. But I just kept telling myself, "This is not what God wants. It's not what God wants." And I was able to fight that urge, and I have not been able to genuinely genuinely fight that urge for a year now the next time you get the urge though just rebuke it in the name of jesus bro try it i guarantee you it'll work but yeah that's that's what happened to me and i just want to live better now and i want to live for jesus so yeah Amen, bro. that's great Amen. that was All great right. to hear any closing thoughts before no we should end in prayer. Believe right? the gospel. End it in prayer. Or like say a verse. Or something. Hey, hey, Daniel, can you lead us in prayer? Can I lead you all in prayer? Yeah, during the, sure. during the podcast. Yeah. God, thank you for letting me and my friends come together like this to uh, hear each other's testimonies and to uh, just gotta learn a little bit more about each other. It's truly a blessing to uh, to hear what you you've done for everyone's life here. And God, I just pray that you would fill everyone with the Holy Spirit right now. Fill this room with the Holy Spirit. Help us uh, feel your presence. Um, anyone else that's still dealing with anything, like God, I just pray that you would send your Spirit to take it away. Deliver all, deliver all of us from our lives of sin. And uh, bring us closer to your Son, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.